Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to dye crochet chain, crochet chain, crochet chain for a self-striping yarn. Wait a minute Rebecca, this looks really really short. This was done with 100 grams of worsted weight yarn and I'm actually not going to dye it in the way that it was shown here. This is equivalent to the sock yarn one that I had done um, in a previous episode of Dye Pot Weekly. But I am going to try to dye a self-striping yarn today by using this crochet chain that I created out of a crochet chain. I took 100 grams of worsted weight yarn and wound it into two different 50 gram balls. I then took two ends of the yarn together and created a, uh, a crochet chain with two strands of yarn. I then took these two ends together and uh, did one more crochet chain. So what we have here is something that we could end up with two matching 50 gram balls of yarn, but we can also get sort of some self striping that will um, maybe not repeat because of the way that it's put together, but at least will be symmetrical within the skein. So we'll have two different matched symmetrical skeins of yarn. Now, as we paint this, the stripes are not going to be solid in color. There will be some transition as we transition from one color to the other, but because of these crochet chains, we'll probably also see some kind of modeling and speckling within the various sections themselves. So I think that this is sort of a nice twist on some of the crocheted blanks that we had done in the past. I pre-soaked the yarn in some plain tap water with three tablespoons of white vinegar uh, overnight. I have protected my countertop with some plastic wrap. And now I'm ready to start mixing some colors. I want to hand paint this yarn with some straight 1% stock solutions and we will be using either Jacquard Fire Red or Jacquard Jet Black but I want most of these hues to have predominantly this red feel to it. I'm not planning on measuring my mixing too much. I'm just going to add a little bit of red these cups. Nope. Maybe that's around, I don't know, a sixth of a cup in each or so. Actually, maybe I'll let that one be just the red. And now let's add, mix up the black. A little bit of black to this. And see sort of where we are color-wise. Got my dye safe spoons. I haven't diluted these any with water, but that might actually be necessary depending on how dark things are looking. So this is giving us sort of this, whoops, <laughs> we've got here a nice, actually that's feeling very burgundy like, and then this one is more of a bright red. Actually, I thought that maybe I would try to mix something in between, but maybe I should just do stripes of these two colors. Huh. This is what's sort of fun about hand painting sometimes, is that um, the colors that you want to create sort of evolve as you go. Um, but yeah, I am actually really, really liking where these are right now. Hmm. Okay, maybe then let's add a touch more black here just to make there be a nice separation between these two colors. Let's see. Yeah. I guess it's not vastly different, but it's definitely like it's not black black. There's a red undertone to it, which I think is going to look so, so cool. And with this one, I'm just going to go ahead and pour that in straight there. All right, let's get set up so we can get ready to 
hand paint our yarn. I have divided my crochet chain of crochet chains into a pro into quarters. So let me see, if I were to do this as is, oh, I didn't consider, hmm, because I was thinking, I was like, oh, I would do it, just do it in half like this, but actually, let, let me think about that, because here we've got doubling over, so, huh, I need to think about the math about this a little bit more. The way I have this laid out, we have essentially doubled over the yarn three times. Um, once when we put the two ends of our little crochet chains together to make this bigger crochet chain, once when we divided this in half at this point, and then we divided it in half one more time. So if I were to, as I was initially thinking, paint half of this one color and half the other, we would get um, this, since this is a double over spot, this length would be the same as this length right here. But this length with our ends would be half the size of that. Um, so that is just something to consider. So one way that we could get around that and have something a little more equal is potentially by having, instead of doing a long color to just two sections, we do say an A, B, A, B, where we have a very short segment of A, longer section of B, longer section of A, and then a very short segment of B over there. Maybe not like super short, but maybe like, you know, an inch or so long. And so this will still give us these alternating stripes, but the size difference of the very end versus these turns won't be as noticeable. Maybe. This is my plan. <laughs> And I would like to start dyeing, but first I actually want to mark approximately this halfway point here. Okay, so let's start with our darker red color. And I'm going to be applying the dye, oh you can't see, I'm going to be applying the dye using some foam brushes. And so I am going to start at this halfway mark. And I'm going to need to add more and more dye. I think I can remove this spoon. Um, and the nice thing about the foam brushes is that you can really control where you're adding the color, but and without making too, too much of a mess. Now, I don't have great color penetration yet. There's still some white on the other side, which honestly is something that you could take advantage of if you wanted to. But um, I am gonna carry this first stripe down to about, I think right here. And so therefore, I'm gonna mark that other size side. Now, are my stripes gonna be 100% even? Nope, and that is okay with me. Um, I think that there's a lot of actually tutorials if you wanted to do self-striping yarn by winding skeins so you could calculate what yardage you need for the stripe size you want, and I think that that math is all super, super duper cool. Um, but for today, this is the way we're doing it. And I am gonna do the second color for this very end. So obviously these two segments of color are gonna still be about twice as long as this little segment right here, but since that is overall um, proportionally, that's proportionally less of a big deal now. Um, oh yeah, this is gonna be cool. And even with getting some good color application, you might still get some really cool modeling here. I doubt we will get any breaking. 
um, just because these colors don't really, these acid dyes don't really break. But we'll probably see some tonal differences in in these colors when we unravel them because there could be some, you know, some white spots left behind. I mean, right now, there's definitely some white spots left behind, but later on there could be, could be more. So you could also do a squeeze bottle and then massage the color in with your hand. But again, I find this overall to be a little less messy. All right, now on this side, I'm gonna attempt to do something that is about, oh, I almost was gonna go ahead and do the tips, whoops. <laughs> so maybe that's gonna be a bit shorter over here than the other side, but again, that's okay. Um, I almost just went and did the, the tip, which wasn't what I wanted. Now, if you wanted to try to paint just half the skein for some kind of cool effect, um, oh, I wonder if this, huh, these could actually be a little longer than I thought. These aren't quite as short. These actually might be very similar in length to those, but hey, that's okay. Um, we could have some alternating stripe sizes. Um, <laughs> I was kind of hoping to make them long enough so that it would still be stripey, but not too long. But we will see when we unravel this um, how it turns out. If you wanted to only apply the dye to half of the crochet chain, so then you could unravel it for some really cool speckles, um, you could, ab I mean, absolutely do that. I might want to lay out the crochet chain in a way, so that way you're painting the same side, so that way you get a consistent effect all the way through, but that is just my personal thought. And now I'm going to do the darker color. Sometimes I go into a colorway and I have a, a actually I can make this a tiny bit longer. There we go. Sometimes I go into a colorway with a very specific plan. Other times I go into it more with um, an idea and then as I mix the colors that sort of shapes the design a bit for me. Now over here, I'm getting much better color penetration. I wonder if this is a bit wetter down here than the other side was, but I think now I am going to wipe this up a bit and then flip it. And since I'm flipping sort of where it is, I don't really need to worry about all this excess dye a ton, but better I guess safe than sad. So I'm going to uh, is it gonna let me do that? <laughs> yeah, I'll try. I can always adjust the ends as needed. <laughs> that I need to hear. The one color that I'm a little worried about is our blacker color just because I have this is the one issue about mixing without measuring is that if you're gonna run out of dye that might cause you some heartache. As I'm doing this, I'm sort of looking on either side as well, and I'm curious. Oh dear. <laughs> um, I'm not really seeing any white through. I'll be able to, even if I'm out of dye, I'll be able to like squish this through a bit. Um, the if I was doing this on a super wash wool, those absorb color a lot faster than this. Well, the Andy's worsted weight yarn, which is non superwash. And I'm trying to pay attention to where there might be some little bits 
of white. I don't mind if there is white in here. I just would like it to be because of the crochet chain and not because of my painting skills, if that makes sense. But there we go, because I'm curious. I'm a bit curious, but I'm at least getting the whole outside of this to have some color. Switch to the other side again. That's okay. And this one is a bit easier because I can pour more of just the straight red out of the bottle. Now, I am not a painter by any stretch, but I think that um, there's, you know, a lot that you could do here with the amount of color and the like how lightly you put the coverage on. Like we use our, some of our misting sprays or spray bottles to get a really light coverage on the outside. That could be really cool, but here's one of the examples. This is the kind of white that I want to try to avoid. Um, obvious whites that are left on the outside of our chain. But I don't mind there being some variation in the tone at all. That I think is part of the charm of having hand painted stripes versus doing mini skeins and dip dyeing them. Um, where you could still get some, you know, variegated tones. It's just a bit different. I can always go over any missing spots that it looks from the darker color with just plain red. Um, I don't think that that would be a huge problem. Um, nice thing is that this is way easier than with, say, um, to look for the white spots than it would be with yarn because there's just fewer ways that it can turn. Um, but like here's a spot right here. It's nice to have one brush per color, otherwise you have to do a lot more rinsing and back and forth. But I, I guess this is also a good time to say I am really, really careful when it comes to my dye safe and my non-dye safe equipment. And so once I use a foam brush for acid dyes, or for commercial acid dyes, I will not reuse it with food coloring. Um, unless I'm doing a food coloring acid dye combo, and in which case I will use only dye safe stuff the whole time. So once something is non-food safe, it remains non-food safe. And that even goes for the basins where I wash everything. So, let's see how we're doing. This is my lighter color, I think so. It's pretty good. Pretty darn good. And my estimate of how much dye I would need is also fairly spot on. You guys, I, I'm pretty impressed with myself today. Not gonna lie. Let's move all of this back. So next, I need to get ready to steam this. And of course, I don't even have the steamer basket set up and ready to go. Now, the plastic wrap that I use to protect my work surface can double to protect and prevent our different stripes from mixing into one another. In general, I have been attempting to reduce the amount of plastic wrap that I use. Um, there, I guess it's ultimately a limit to how much I can reduce it because in something like this where you wanna keep the colors as separated as possible, um, you do want there to be some kind of physical barrier 
to prevent the yarn from touching. My steamer basket and a dedicated dye pot is nice and steamy. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the yarn in here for, I think, 30 minutes. Now, I get asked all the time if I could do this in the microwave. And you certainly can. Um, my personal preference is to only use food safe dyes in my microwave. Um, I prefer to just make sure I can easily clean it and keep food stuff separated from dye stuff. Ultimately, it comes at your personal questions, and if you have any questions, um, you can always reach out to the dye manufacturer. But I do know that at least Dharma Acid Dyes, they have some microwave techniques listed on their website. But ultimately, it is easier for most people to store a dedicated dye pot with a steamer basket than it is to store a dyeing microwave. That's just my two cents. I'll be back when we're ready to remove this from the dye pot. The 30 minutes are up. And take off the lid. I'm now gonna leave the yarn here to cool completely so we can unwrap it and wash our crochet chain of crochet chains. Okay, let's unwrap this thing. And I can touch it and my fingers are fine. And let's see if any color comes out. All right, I, oh, there's some color. Oh man, <laughs> I moved that and that was some color bleeding. Okay, all things considered, given this depth of color, that is not so bad. But honestly, I'm so used to the food coloring, and which I think ultimately has less, you know, I have less color on my project, that I was not expecting to see some bleeding. Where was it, the end where my blood? Huh. But we do successfully, and I think the stripes, because of the way I ended up, except for the very ends maybe, ended up being a lot more even. Yeah, I think they ended up fairly even, which is funny because that was absolutely not my intent. I was like, oh, I'll do short and tall. But way to go, Rebecca. All right, I'm gonna add some dish soap. This is clear dish soap. Um, I find that Adding it causes more bleeding usually. I am using cool water right now. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure, we did, I steamed this a really long time, so it's possible I hit a saturation point for the amount of dye that certain areas could absorb. Um, this is more bleeding than I have seen with either the black or red before, but actually, I'm not sure. Maybe it's also the yarn. So I think otherwise, I've mostly dyed, huh, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not too worried about it. I do think that for these ultimately minimal amounts of bleeding, using like a larger sink or something to rinse it, might be helpful because here I'm having to change the water a bit more frequently, but all things considered, there is still a little bleeding in here, so it's really not bad. Even though we're in some crochet chains here, I do need to be careful not to agitate it too much. I, this is a 100% wool yarn, it is felsible, and I want to make sure I will be able to unravel it. Um, yeah, but I don't think, well, I'm not going to start now, but ooh, I see some variation. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to keep rinsing this until the water runs clear, and I think we're basically there. And then I'm going to hang this up to dry as the crochet of crochet chain. And once it's dry, then we'll come back and unravel it. 
this. With the exception of the very, very end, our stripes are pretty even. Um, and now I want to unravel it so that way uh, we can start um, seeing a little more about it. Now the length, ooh, do you see that modeling that's in there? I'll have to zoom in once I've pulled it all apart. But the length of each of these individual crochet sections is much longer um, than it was before. Ooh, that's so pretty. Actually, I wanna get a ruler. Each of these stripes, let's see, it's about eight and a half inches. Maybe nine inches, eight. I'd say each of these stripes started off in this crochet chain of crochet chains as about eight and a half to nine inches. And now, once we've unraveled this one section, uh, it is well over three times that. One, two, or actually, yeah, maybe about four times as long. It's about four feet. Um, as that crochet chain. So I'm going to continue to unravel. I think that we successfully have something that is going to be self-striping. And that is awesome. But now, and I'm going to need to wind this um, into a little ball or a cake, but we can tell that it's self-striping. We can tell that in some of these more intermediate segments, uh, we have some modeling at the transitions, but there's also some really nice variation we can see already in the tone. And this is a little more apparent in these darker sections where we have some of the darker reddish brown and some of the paler colors too. I wanted to zoom in so you could see a little bit more in these darker sections. So we have the lighter patches and darker patches. With this red, it is really hard for me to get it to show up true on camera. It's looking way more pink here. It definitely is a true like apple red color. That's just so pretty. So now I'm going to go and take this mess of crochet chains and I am going to wind it into just a simple ball and then I'm going to start unraveling it into our 250 gram skeins. So it was really easy to wind my crochet chain into a ball. Now I wonder if it'll be as easy for me to wind it into two skeins on my Nitty Knotty or if the two strands are going to be uh, twisted around each other. Either way, I think that, you know, there's only 220 yards total, so it shouldn't be too bad, but I'll show it to you on the Nitty Knotty in a moment. We totally got a self-striping yarn. There are multiple, multiple stripes of each color. Let me see, about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 red stripes. Um, and since those are on either end, maybe about 12 of the darker stripes. Um, and they're matched. Each stripe might not be identically sized, but the two skeins of yarn uh, are matched up. So if you're making something, you would be able to make a matched set. Or you could use both of these in one project and sort of continue on your wonderful stripingness. Now, if you're going to use this to make a sweater, it wouldn't be full on striping. You could get some pooling. But something smaller like mittens, um, you would definitely, definitely get stripes. I think that if you wanted to do self striping for a hat, you maybe would have wanted to make the stripes a bit longer. But, oh, I am so excited about this. You can even tell from up here that we do have a little bit of a speckling in it, um, especially in the darker color. And I think that that's a lot of fun and it'll bring some really nice dimension into the project. Dyeing your own self-striping yarn is something that takes a lot of prep work. However you're going to do it, whether you're going to wind a bunch of mini skeins that are connected, 
or do something like this and make some kind of crochet chain of crochet chains to hand paint. So is this technique worth it? That's up to you. You might want to have something that's a little more solid in each of the stripes, or you might enjoy this model's nature that comes from the resist within the crochet chain of crochet chains. Um, either way, the winding and unraveling is fairly simple. You can put on a TV show and do it as you are watching. This is not a technique that would be easy to mass produce because of the prep work involved on either end, but it is so beautiful that it would be really fun to do this to make something for yourself. You can see that the ends on this game are a bit crimped. Now I'm going to take this, I'm going to go soak it in some water or really just wet it so that way the crimp can relax a bit and hang it up to dry. I'm not going to show this step, but it's something that will keep, uh, keep the yarn from getting too messy uh, as you store it. Making the crochet chain of crochet chains took about the same, a similar amount of time as making a homemade blank. So which should you do? I think that making this crochet chain of crochet chains is something that's easier to do if you want to try to get something that is self-striping like we did today. If you want to, to get something that's more of a gradient um, with dip dyeing or something, then you might be better off with the blank, just um, especially if you have a crank machine, um, that might be easier um, because you have a little more width and less length. Either way, you could use this technique with a number of applications. You could have taken this crochet chain of crochet chains and slowly added it into a pot to get a long symmetrical gradient. Um, there's many, many applications, and I look forward to hearing what you would do with a crochet chain of crochet chains. So leave me a comment on the video. Before I take the yarn off of the Nitty Knotty, I wanted to show the end because that's where the stripes are the most obvious. For reference, here is one of the 50 gram skeins all crimped up, just so you can see how much it needs to relax. If you have the space, you could always wet the yarn on the Nitty Knotty and let it dry that way. But lately, I've been letting them relax in skein form. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for joining me for this dyeing adventure. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and give the video a like. I am so excited with how this turned out, and I hope you are too. I get a lot of questions about what happens to the yarn that I dye in these videos. And the answer is that a lot of it ends up in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store. My shop is filled with dozens of skeins of hand dyed yarn featured in past and upcoming dyeing videos. So you can watch the yarn be made and then bring it home and turn it into something fantastic yourself. You can find a link to my shop in the video description and the iCard. Thank you so much for watching.